Are you hot, Dixie? Huh? It's a hot day out here, isn't it, girl? Hey guys, so today I've got something a little different going on. This is my wife's 2018 Jeep Cherokee, and it's got the 2.4 liter four cylinder engine in it, which by the way, I hate, and I don't really think she likes it either. But anyway, another story for another time. And it's time to do an oil change on it again. So it dawned on me, you know, I've never really showed how you do an oil change on these things because it's way more difficult than it is on the Wrangler or the Gladiator. So let me show you something here. <clears throat> now, one of the things I wanna mention about this engine is she's got about 22,000 miles on here now. This thing drank oil as bad as gasoline for a while. When we first got this thing, it was consuming quarts, plural, <laughs> quarts of oil. Uh, unbelievable, to the point where I talked to the dealership about it and we were thinking about doing an oil, doing an oil consumption test. Uh, but the service tech told me, he said, usually around 20,000 miles, these engines kind of, you know, they, the, the, the piston rings finally seat and the oil consumption finally goes down. So since I figured it would be a real hassle for my wife to have to take this thing over to the dealership and get the level oil level checked all the time, and I knew she wouldn't really want to do that, I decided to wait and give it about 20,000 and just see if he was right. And it turns out that he was, you know, we got up around 18, 19, 20,000 miles. I've been checking it religiously and documenting it. And I noticed that the oil consumption has gone way, way down on this engine. Uh, so it's to the point now where it consumes very, very little oil, maybe a quart between changes. Um, another thing I'm going to do, see if it's on here. Yeah, see they, they specify the 0W20 and I don't care what anybody says, that is a fuel economy play is what that is. They're trying to squeeze every microscopic amount of fuel economy they can out of these engines for the purpose of scoring better on EPA certification. The fact is this stuff, while it may protect the engine fine, it's not going to protect the engine as well as a good 5W30 synthetic. And so that's what I'm going to put in this engine now. Going to start using 530. Not only will it protect this engine better because this thing runs really hot. Like I've got the hood open right now just to let the heat get out of here. I can't believe how hot it gets under the hood on this thing. And it doesn't even have a turbo on it, but the 530 will protect it better and it will probably slow the oil consumption down even more. So hopefully it'll get to the point where it doesn't consume any oil at all. Now it's going to be really hard to even show you this because it's so tight under here, but these Cherokees have two trap doors. You got a door here for the oil filter and you got another one back there for the oil pan drain plug. You got to have some kind of a little screwdriver, flat blade screwdriver or something to turn um the locking mechanism 90 degrees and then the door will open up so you can get up in there to that but i found that my oil filter wrench i mean there's still not enough room to get up in there and work it's really a pain especially compared to the wrangler or the gladiator once you get used to doing those these things are a nightmare i had to jack it up just to have enough room to get up under here and work to begin with and now I'm going to have to go down through here and take out some of these 10 millimeter bolts and drop this, um, I guess it's a splash shield. Maybe it's for fuel economy also. I have to drop that down a little bit so I can get my filter wrench in there and work on this thing. Oh, and did I already mention that this tool right here is awesome? That's probably the best 50 or 60 bucks I've spent in a long time. So now I got this thing unbolted. I just took a few of them out. And I'm hoping that now I'll be able to get in here and yeah, I can pull this back. Hopefully enough. Yeah, there we go. See, now I can get to the oil filter and actually take it off a little easier. So let me get that done. And then we'll start working back there on the drain plug. That's another thing I hate about these vertical mount oil filters. Is as soon as you crack them loose, oil goes everywhere. So make sure that when you loosen this thing up, you've got your pan ready. Because it's going to get wet underneath there. And if you don't have your pan ready, you're going to ruin your driveway. So I cracked this thing loose. I'm going to let it drip a little bit more. Get some of the excess out of there. And then we'll go ahead and spin it on off. 
So when I was at Walmart today getting oil and a filter, I, you know, I used the Walmart SuperTech filter last time because, well, to be honest, it was cheap. But I was thinking about it and I decided I was going to look around at the different filters that they had. Normally, I would never use a Fram because my father's a master mechanic with over 40 years of experience and he swears that you shouldn't use these things. But I think they've come a long way because... The camera's not going to pick it up. But when I looked inside this SuperTech filter, what I noticed was that, man, I wish the camera would pick that up so you could see it. But if you ever look in the inside of one of these things, a lot of the internal parts are plastic. Uh, there's a cage in there that uh, holds the filtering media in place that's plastic. There's just a lot of cheap stuff in here. And I guess that's what you would expect for a filter that costs three bucks. Uh, conversely, this one, and again, the camera's probably not picking it up, but if you look inside this one, that cage in there is metal, and it surrounds the filter element with a nice, sturdy-looking metal cage that just makes me feel a little better about it. So this was $5, and this was $3. I figured the extra 2 bucks is well worth it to get a slightly nicer-looking filter. Also, the anti-drain back valve, Looks like it's a little more robust on this one, so it does appear that this filter is a better filter. There's the part number for the 2.4 Cherokee, by the way. So I'm going to use this one this time. I was going to get a Mopar filter, but the price on those went up to 10 bucks. I noticed a lot of the filters are really expensive now. I don't know what's up with that, but anyhow, I'm going to put that one on there this time. All right, so I'm going to try and get back here and show you where the drain bolt is and it's way back there it's a little bitty critter see it back there and what you're going to need is a 13 millimeter and i'm going to use a ratchet so i can do this by feel because you don't want to strip that out okay if you strip that out that's going to be bad news so it's good to do it by feel and that way you don't get it too tight okay so i finally got done underneath of the jeep and i put the little trap doors back on you can see the oil here now i don't remember exactly how many miles are on this particular change because we've been going by that oil life monitor on the dash which is also something i don't normally do but to make it more convenient for the wife i decided to go by that thing i believe it takes between eight and ten thousand miles before it tells you that your oil needs to be changed and you can see it's pretty dark. I think these engines, I believe they're direct fuel injection, and those engines typically run a little dirtier, so no surprise here. The oil is really black. People say the color of the oil doesn't indicate anything. The heck it doesn't. You think it just turns black for the hell of it? No, it turns black because it's got contaminants and things in it that weren't in it when it first came out of the bottle. No big deal, but you can just tell that yeah, it definitely needed to be changed. So now the hard part's done. All we gotta do is put a funnel in here and top it off. So the oil that I've been going with here lately is the Walmart brand SuperTech Full Synthetic. And the reason why is because this oil right here is actually manufactured by Warren Distribution. They've been doing motor oil for like a hundred years and they're really good at it. This oil also does really well and analysis testing and to top it all off five quarts is only 16 bucks so for a full synthetic you can't beat that with a stick if you happen to have a gm vehicle it's dexos approved and it meets all the certifications of the other manufacturers too really good stuff at a really good price so that's why i've been going with this and like i told you we're going to use the 5w30 for better protection and even less oil consumption over time so that's going to pretty much wrap it up the rest is a piece of cake put the funnel in pour it full of oil and we're good to go if you've never changed the oil on one of these in your driveway you're probably going to need a floor jack and an assortment of some basic hand tools it's certainly doable but it is a little bit more of a pain in the rear end than some of the other jeeps so i can understand why a lot of people take these and have them done at the dealership or a quick oil lube place or something like that it just kind of gives you peace of mind though when you do it yourself because you know what oil was used you know you know everything was done right and you don't have to guess and worry about it 
But like I said, I can understand why some people would have these done. Watch out, D. Oh, and one other thing. So obviously you want to dispose of your used oil in a proper location. If you don't have anywhere to take this stuff, I believe some of the auto parts stores will take used oil. So if you don't have anywhere to send this stuff to, check with your local auto parts stores. I think, like I said, that some of them will take this for you. I don't know if they charge or not. I guess they take it for free. You can just bring it right in there to them and they will make sure that it goes where it's supposed to go. All right, so the only part that remains is to reset the oil life monitor. So if you want to do that, of course, you just flip through your menu here until you get to number two, which says vehicle information. Now, you may have one of these other screens showing up. If you scroll over to the left or the right, you'll eventually come to where it says oil life. Obviously, we're at zero, and it tells us just to hit OK to reset it. So we're going to hold OK and uh, i'm not doing it right because, because it says to reset the oil life the engine must be off so let's try that turn it off it actually has to be in run but the engine can't be running i think is what it is so let's just put it in run mode i'm gonna have to do this quick because it's super hot and obviously i'm not gonna have any ac now oil change required yeah we know we just did that and so now let's hold OK and see what happens. OK, so that's not working either. I must have not read the directions properly. <laughs> so you're learning with me. So let's go to accessory mode, see if that works. Nope. Oil life. Okay, I'm going to start it up here so I can see that message again. Hey, kind of embarrassing, but at the same time, I'm learning while you're learning. So let's figure this out here. Oil change required. Now, the first time I tried to do this, it fussed at me. Engine must be off with the ignition and run. Well, that's what we did just a minute ago. So let's try that again. The engine is in run, but the... It's not on, it's just in run, which is what it told us to do. Finicky little critter, isn't it? Hold OK to reset. So I'm holding the button down. And it's not doing anything. Hey, I will be back in just a minute because I'm going to do a little research and figure this out very strange I'll be back okay for some reason it worked that time I did it two or three times and it finally worked I don't know what was up with that guys but anyway the ignitions in the run position obviously the engine is not actually on and then when I held down the OK button the third time it finally worked so apologize for that but hey I just learned something new maybe you did too so that's how you reset that so that your wife won't get the same message every time she gets in here to go to work and now we are finally complete with this job. Thanks for watching.